Hello, I'm Alex Stevenson, and this is Linter Wonderland. Linting is the automated checking of source code for programmatic and stylistic errors and is performed by a lint tool, commonly known as a linter. It finds silly mistakes, syntax errors, bugs, incorrect amounts of white space, and suspicious constructs. In technical terms, a winter is a period of time where the interest in a technology is low and lacks significant growth. For example, in the 1970s, we witnessed an AI winter. Unfortunately, you could be in the middle of a linter winter. That's right. We're talking to you. You're not linting your code, are you? Linting is a type of static testing, which is extremely fast because the code is analyzed without the need to run it, and is also considered a security testing tool. It is not a superficial process and can detect logic issues in your code, such as unused imports and variables, which are memory drains. Although linting can be considered a type of test, it occurs in the build phase of continuous integration, not the test phase. You should not only perform linting before the test phase, but also before any code reviews. You don't want the team wasting time correcting things which could have been caught with automation. As we just mentioned, linting should be done early, either in pre-commit or build, when problems are easier to fix. An org should establish official coding and format styles so the results of linting remain the same throughout the code base. The format chosen won't please everyone, but it will be worth it in the long run as it saves everyone a lot of headaches. Most integrated development environments have built-in linter support to check or even autocorrect code locally. Linting and IDEs can usually be disabled or enabled at the push of a button and can be ran just as easily. I like to have linting run every time I save a file, and this can be configured in the IDE settings. One downside to linting is that it can create many warnings, some of which can even lead to false positives and false negatives, mistakenly labeling things as incorrect or missing things which are actually incorrect. But believe me, you want to handle these errors early before they propagate and multiply throughout the build and pipeline. Linting is not a miracle worker. It will fix blatant logical or stylistic issues in code, but it won't teach best coding practices. In this sense, linting could just be making your messy spaghetti code look good, so understand it won't be solving the underlying problems. If the programming language you use is a compiled language, then the compiler may manage the linting for you. Python is an interpreted language, so we have various lint tools available for it. PyLint is a linter for checking style and is one of the oldest and most mature Python linters. It can be a bit slower than some of the other linters, but it's very complete. PyCodeStyle checks style and is a subset of PyLint. It is the official linter tool to check Python code against the style conventions of PEP8. The black code formatting tool relies on PyCodeStyle. This tool can perform linting more quickly by automatically reformatting text. The automatic reformatting is optional and will not delete or modify the functionality of the Python file. Many Python-based projects are now requiring that code is blackened to ensure that all code is consistent. PyFlakes only checks syntax and will not check style at all. If you want to use PyFlakes with a format standard such as PEP8, then the Python module Flake8 is recommended. Here are even more reasons to have you sprinting for linting. According to OWASP, linting increases security by detecting errors in code that can lead to security vulnerabilities, detecting formatting or styling issues, making code more readable and thus more secure, increasing the use of best practices and overall quality of the code, and facilitating uniformity, which makes maintenance and documentation of code easier. Linting also enables automation. We can run automated linting on code triggered by repo events with GitHub Actions or GitLab CI. AI is making a huge impact on the technology world and DevOps is no exception. However, some of the AI tools are currently in the early phases of development or real-world application. Tab9 is an AI assistant for software developers that has been honed and perfected over the years. This is a sort of preemptive linting, if you will, because the AI coding will reduce human error. Tab9 uses generative AI technology to predict and suggest your next lines of code based on context and syntax. It predicts the best match by learning the coding patterns of you or your team, as well as the best open source coding practices. Tab9 then creates customized suggestions that should be a good match for the rest of the code you're writing. Tab9 Pro delivers whole line and full function code completions, natural language to code, all at around half the price of ChatGPT Plus currently, and it has a free plan too. 
Tab9 is powered by machine learning models pre-trained on open source code with permissive licenses and can be run on a developer's laptop, on a server behind your firewall, or in the cloud. Tab9 has amazing privacy features. Total code privacy. Your code will always remain private. Tab9 never shares or stores any of your code. Sharing your code with the Tab9 servers for your private code models requires an explicit opt-in. Tab9 does not retain any user code beyond the immediate time frame required for training models. The IDs which support Tab9 include VS Code, IntelliJ, Sublime, Visual Studio, PyCharm, Eclipse, Jupyter Notebook, and many more. Thank you for joining us on this excursion through Linter Wonderland. To learn more about linting, testing, builds, continuous integration, and all things DevOps, visit us in the developer forum on the Cisco community. We'll see you there.